Good morning, good morning, or high noon to all. We are, this is another good day. We are in the midst of getting ready for our Good Friday services. As we customarily take and commemorate the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we will proceed on with this. And I'll do a verse of this song of At the Cross. At last I did my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die. Would he devote that sacred head for such a one as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Okay, let us note for our scripture reading. I'll be coming out of Mark, the 15th chapter, and I'll begin reading at the 15th verse, and it reads as follows. And so Pilate, willing to contend the people, please release Barnabas unto them and deliver Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away unto the hall called Presterium, and they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it on about his head and began to salute, salute him, Hail, the king of the Jews. And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees, worship him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put on his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. And they compelled one Simon, a Syrian, Syrian, who passed about coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus to bear his, crowd, his cross. And they bring him unto the place Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of the skull. And they gave him to drink wine min mingled with mirth, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garment, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the subscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. And when they crucified, and with him they crucified two thieves, one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyed the temple and builded it in three days. Save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribe, have he saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. And then when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. 
And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Ella, Ella, Shalomathi, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by, when they heard it, said, Behold, he called his delight. And one man ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let's loan, let alone, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent and twain from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that he so cried out, gave up the ghost, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. The reading of the word for the people of God, shall we pray. This morning, I can't have a father. Father, we come to Paul's and just to pay homage and honor of this day that is set aside as we remember the horrific death that your son Jesus Christ died on the cross, providing salvation to all who believe. Father, we thank you for giving your son and we thank him for willingly sacrificing his life so that all who believe will have eternal life. And Father, we thank you that it, the churches that are open this, this day to celebrate and commemorate the sacrificial death of the cross. Father, let all of us come in true worship and true honor of what you so deserve and in thanksgiving for what you've done for us on this day. For Sunday morning is coming. And Father, all who believe in you, Son Jesus, died with him on Friday, but we will be rose with we with him on Sunday morning. And for this, Father, we say thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Okay. Well, preparing to bring this Good Friday message, which is customary for the crucifixion and the resurrection season, some might wonder and ask the question, why is it Good Friday when my Savior is having to suffer a horrible criminal like death? Well, let me try and answer this question as my focus is on what Jesus said while on the cross. But first, let me say this. It's a Good Friday because if Jesus had not died on the cross of Calvary that Friday, there would be no hope of salvation where all who believe and accept him as their personal savior will spend eternity with him. If Jesus had not died, all humanity would remain in a state of guiltiness with being separated from our creator, God the Father and sustainer. Neither would we receive and enjoy the free gift of God's grace and mercy, all of which is undergirded by God's unconditional love. It is a good Friday because the perfect Passover lamb of God fulfilled his mission of providing salvation for all who believe in him. Yes, it is a good Friday because it was on the cross that Christ took our unrighteousness and gave us his righteousness. Oh, what a gift to receive. And taking our unrighteousness and transferring his righteousness onto us, he sanctified, which is to set us apart from the world as believers who have been called out of darkness into the marvelous light of righteousness. He justified us, having our sins pardoned, where we as believing Christians are no longer alienated from our Heavenly Father. On Good Friday, Jesus Christ took his precious blood and redeemed man, who is all believers, by buying back our sin-sick souls from hell into the kingdom of God. Yes, Jesus is our redeemer. And while redeeming man from hell, he, Jesus, had a few words to say. So let me look at these words as we reflect on 
that the love of God the Father had and has for humanity and the love and the willingness of the Son displayed that he would give his life for mankind. So in Luke 23 and 34, we find Jesus' first word when he looked out over humanity and said these words, Father, forgive them, for they know, do not know what they are doing. That's from the King James Word. Christ was telling his Father to forgive them because I am taking their sins, and in doing so, they have now, they now belong to you. Forgive them because I have healed their brokenness. I have healed their brokenheartedness. Father, forgive them because I have bound up their sin sick wounds. Father, I have taken their bruises and I have worn their crowns of thorns, which was placed on my head. So, Father, forgive them because they do not know, neither do they understand the love and the blessings that you have for them and they have been forgiven, forgotten, that you created them in your image and likeness to be in an intimate fellowship with you. Father, forgive them as I am, their mercy seat, taking on all of their sins and unforgiveness. Father, forgive them because I have made everything right between you and humanity. But I let us just continue to reflect on Jesus' conversation where there were two thieves, one on either side of Jesus. One recognized Jesus as someone who did not deserve to die a horrible death and asked Jesus for to remember him when he come into his kingdom. And Jesus looked on the repentant thief and said these words, I tell you the truth. This today you will be with me in paradise. That too is from the King James version of Luke, no, the NIV version of Luke 23 and 43. Jesus was forgiven the unrepentant sinner of his sin. This is what happens when sinners believe in Jesus Christ and accept him as one's personal savior. Their sins are forgiven and the person is no longer separated from God. The repentant sinner is now a member of God's kingdom and are now part of God's peculiar people of holy nation, of holy priests. The redeemed person is a new creature in Christ, while the unrepentant sinner is a representative of all those who reject Jesus as their Lord and Savior, the one who was found worthy to pay their sin debt. God, being all-knowing, knew many would reject his saving grace and be lost forever why many will accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. The choice is clear, accept Jesus and be saved or reject him and be lost. As Jesus complete, continued completing his mission of bringing salvation to all who believe, there was a crowd. There in the crowd was his mother and his disciples. Jesus looked out unto the crowd and saw his mother and spoke these words, I'm coming from John 19, 26 and 27. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. Then he said to the disciples, behold thy mother. And from that hour, the disciples took her into his own home. This is another demonstration of his love for humanity and others. Jesus was ensuring that his mother would be cared for even in his dying hour. Jesus was perfectly, perfect, perfectly caring for his mother even in death. When Jesus told his disciples, who is, we can presume that is probably John, to behold the son, he was establishing a church family where love is the tapestry that holds everything together, family, friends, and even the universe, the power of Jesus. Yes, children are to love their parents and to make every effort to care for their needs, especially in their old age. A mother's love is unconditional, just as God loves us is. So let me just kind of move on. So the next word that our Savior spoke while dying on the cross, atoning man's sin, 
the pain and agony of the savior of the world dying a criminal death until the elements went out of control. The sun turned dark and back toward the father saying, I cannot look on your son dying. The moon turned to blood and the weight of the world was so powerful that the earth began to reel and rock like a drunk man. And it was at this point, the ninth, the ninth hour, that the only time in Christ's life that he felt separated from his father, that he uttered these words as recorded in Matthew 27 and 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama shalalabate, that is my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus felt separated from his father dying for sinners substitutionary death. When sinners die out of the safety of salvation, they are eternally separated from God. Christ died forsaken so that all who believe will not have to be forsaken for the savior we have. And John 19 and 28, records Jesus final words. And as he fulfilled scripture said, I thirst. Jesus knew that everything was now finished and to fulfill the scripture, he said, I thirst. These words were prophesied in Psalm 69, 21, which state, and my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. This is what happened when Jesus said, I thirst. Instead of water to quench his thirst, they gave him vinegar. Jesus, knowing that his mission was completed, he said, it is finished. And I don't want to seem like I'm rushing through, but I'm just talking about the words, Jesus' conversation and the meaning of what they said. And in his triumphant cry. Jesus had completed his mission of providing salvation to all who believe. And he said, it is finished. It is finished is a triumphal shout that the earthly ministry had come to a close and his work on the cross was now complete and he will return back to his father. Jesus had finished his work at the sacrificial Passover lamb dying the substitutionary death for lost souls. It is finished. Yes, Jesus finished his mission here on earth. Nothing can be added to the finished work of Jesus' sacrificial death, and nothing can be taken away from him, for it is now complete. Through his shed blood, he has forgiven sin that was no need for yearly earthly pre-sacrifices. His blood paid it all. That's why he said it is finished. He had completed his work of reconciling humanity back to God and had won the victory over Satan. Yes, it is finished. A man, as man, believers, we are no longer held captive by Satan sin and shame because it is finished. There's nothing again that can be added to the finished work of Christ. There's nothing that can be added to or again taken from Christ's finished work on the cross of Calvary. He did it all, all by himself. And he said, it is finished. And when Jesus had cried out in a loud voice, he said, Father, and to thy hands, I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last breath and he gave up the ghost. You'll find this in Luke 23 and 46. Because of the finished work of, care of Christ on Calvary's cross, all believers in Jesus Christ can now shout hallelujah, glory hallelujah, because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. And yes, 
we can sing the song that I just sang this morning, or the or beginning of the service. At last, did my Savior bleed, my sovereign die, for he, he devoted his sacred head for such a form as I. We didn't deserve the merciful sacrificial death that Christ died for us, but out of love, he did it anyway. And it is worthy, he's worthy of all of our praises, glory, and honor. Yes, he's worthy. And it is incumbent upon us as believers to take time out on the crucifixion crime and reflect on why it is called Good Friday. Because, as I said, if Jesus had not done what he done, we would have no hope for tomorrow. If Jesus had not done what he done, there would be no salvation. There would be no reconciliation between humanity and God. We'd all be lost. And because he did what he did out of love, his unconditional love, agape love, for the prized creation of God the Father, his work is finished. It is finished. And we have so much to thank him for because of his complete atoning works on Calvary's cross. And yes, we too can say it is finished. My savior paid it all. We must take a personal look at it, internal self-reflective look and say, this is what God, the Father, did. He gave his son, the son gave his life. And yes, when we look at the true meaning of grace, it is God's righteousness at Christ's expense. And yes, we are, we, he counted us worthy. He looked beyond our faults and saw our needs. We needed a savior. And Jesus Christ is that savior. Yes, we needed a savior. Uh, and Jesus Christ is that savior. Yes, it is finished. And I thank God that Jesus finished his work here on the earth, of going to the cross of Calvary, dying. But let's just make it personal for my sins, a sin that he did not commit, but a sin debt that he paid all out of love. Yes. He paid it all. For that, we all must say thank you. There is nothing no greater than to have a Savior who took his blood and washed us white as the snow. He took his blood and gave us a right standing with our Father by pardoning our sins. And he took his blood so now that we have been our sins has been forgiven and pardoned. We can now have that re restored relationship with our heavenly father. And when God the father looks at each of us believers, he sees the righteousness of his son Jesus in us. And him, Jesus Christ, doing what he did, all believers must now sing praises, glory, and shout glory, hallelujah. I am saved. I am set free. I have been liberated from sin. And each day of our lives, we must live manifesting the righteousness of Christ as an expression of our gratitude for what Christ done for us on the cross with Calvary. But yes, it may have looked gloomy on Friday to the naked eye, but it was good that he did what he did because Sunday morning is coming. And when we, and we all who died with Christ will rise with him on Sunday morning. I thank God that he did. And yes, it was a good Friday for all who believe. 
Let us pray. Kind Father, I thank you for your son Jesus. And I thank him for going to the cross for our sins. And Father, let us this day make this day take on a new meaning and the atoning works that your son did for all who believe and for all who are yet to believe. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen.